welcome to tonight's show. It's good to have you join me tonight and you're in for a very special treat. My guests tonight are known around the world for their music and these two brothers have achieved over 25 million sales globally, reached number one in 30 countries and were the first British band since the Beatles to have a number one in the US with their debut single, I'm Too Sexy. Let's take a listen. It hurts And I'm too sexy for Milan Too sexy for Milan New York and Japan And I'm too sexy for your party Too sexy for your party No way I'm disco dancing I'm a model You know what I mean my little turn on the catwalk Yeah, on the catwalk On the catwalk, yeah I do my little turn on the catwalk Please welcome to the show the one and only, right, said Fred. The two Richard, and only. The two and only. <laughs> yeah, Richard and, and Fred, lovely Hi. to have you. Thank Pleasure. you so Thank much. You much. Last time uh, we saw each other was actually on a Zoom uh, during yeah. lockdown. Yes. We won't talk about that. It's no. wonderful to have you in the studio. Thank you. It's really. much better moving oh, around. It's so nice, isn't yeah. it? So, yeah. I see you've been doing so much. I mean, first of all, let's let's go back a little bit though. Let's start okay. where you first started. So, Fred. <laughs> really? How far do I go back? I noticed you were looking at Fred. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, Fred, you're, you're you know. formed in 1989. Was that right? Right, so Fred was. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. we were active before that. In and you were doing bands. that. Yeah, what were you doing before that, actually? We, were, we had a band called The Actors that we won those bands, but close, but no cigar. Yeah. So, <laughs> we went on the road. First tour was 1978. Wow. With yeah. um, an electronic duo called Suicide, who were American, New York duo. And on that tour, we did show with uh, shows with um, Joy Division as well. Oh, great! Yeah. So then we were in and out of record deals. Then we did some. We just worked with some other people. Richard worked with uh, David Bowie. I worked with um, Bob Dylan. That's right. We both did some stuff with Mick Jagger. Um, and then we went. That's a history. Yeah, then we, this is really good, just whizzing through. I was going to say, it's whizzing through. <laughs> yeah. I've got to all show you. It all happened in 10 days. <laughs> it all happened in 10 days. It's and amazing. Here, you are. And here we are. Yeah. But it's like, one, of, one is fabulous that you can remember those dates. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, because I, I tend, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't manage what we do, but I, I yes, do the admin. Exactly. And so all this stuff is indelibly well, I was going to ask you, and you touched on it already, did you ever do something separate? I mean, I know that you've just said well, you we have were. have sex separately. So, well, of course. <laughs> which I think is well, good for Which I think is like just to set the record straight. Um, but is there anything you've done, you know, musically separately, or has it always been no, to together? No, music's always been together, actually. It Although has, we too much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Richard's done some TV shows yeah. separately, separately, like um, Gay Time. Gay Time. Stuff. What was that thing in Jordan? Oh, um, Forges, Desert Forges. Desert oh. Forges. Yeah. Which Do we want a, to talk about that? Richard? Well, no. It was <laughs> the only thing I'll tell you about that is yeah. it was in the desert in yes. Jordan, really, really hot. So there was an issue about sunburn. Oh, yes, uh, right, of course, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, everybody was saying, well, maybe, we should, maybe we should get Richard a hat. Yes. And as I was walking past one of the directors, he said, and I heard him say, he said, no, we can't put him in a hat. He looks like an idiot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say it as it is. So, so, say yeah. as it. Yeah. So, so is the criteria of you looking like an idiot? Just a hat. Yeah, it's just, just the hat. hat. Yes. So I've got to ask now, did you wear the hat? Or no, I didn't wear the hat, but we had um, punk, sort of punkawala type people. 
Oh, yes. George, George, Jordanian oh, yes, kids yes. with the umbrellas. That's wonderful. That's Some koalas? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Yes. We, we, well, um, that's what they were. That's so, what they were, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. the one thing I do remember that was there's a scene in Lawrence of Arabia yes. when he's standing on a particular outcrop of rock and they took me to see that rock. It's still there. Oh, wow. Which is really, really, I mean, okay. that part of that part of Jordan was really fantastic. But of course, now going there is a, is a, is a much so, more yeah. dangerous prospect than it was back then. So what was your first uh, ever performance as Right Said Fred? Where were you? The first oh. one was I'm Too Sexy started to break in the clubs. Yes. So I was working at a gay bar in Hammersmith called the Royal Oak Gay Pub. And I used to do the door. And um, we got booked... They booked us because sexy started to break. And on that same night, we had a gig out in... Um, That's right. It, not, oh, where was it? Walthamstow or... Somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. East. Yeah. yeah. And, we, and we had... Um, it was Son of was it? Or? Kid oh. Jensen? Kid Jensen. It, it, oh, what, one I of don't those remember. Sort of, yeah, you, radio. You know these sort of like big multi, mm. multi-floor clubs? Yes. And we've got a... <laughs> we were quite into the sort of underground scene before... Um, right, so Fred. So we had a lot of a lot of the clothes you saw us Fetish-y wearing. kind of stuff. We yeah. had that stuff because right. we. Well, I, I used to do the door at Skin Two, and so we went and did "I'm Too Sexy" at this club, just the one song. And there's a picture of us playing inside. Whoever <laughs> the DJ was, yeah. he's, he's like that. <laughs> it is the funniest thing. He's like, what? The audience were pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah the audience like, what yeah. on earth is this? Because it was all our own. Cl- I was going to say, clothes. was it your own clothes? Yeah, yeah. Own, yeah. yeah. You yeah. were quite ahead of your time, though. We were, it's a bit like uh, yeah. tw- Twisted Sister do that. Yes. They, they started yeah. all wearing all their mum's clothes. Was that, was that <laughs> intentional? Did you, well, did you had go, no money. go out of your way? No, no. we just So did no you steal your mum's clothes? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just sort of yeah. cut off t-shirts and, yeah. we, and stupid stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. And we've, yeah. Been training, we've been training since about 84, 85. Yeah. Then when we moved to New York, 87, um, which was working in the gym. So we were into that culture. And then, we, then, then once we started putting on a little bit of size, then we got into this whole fetish thing. Because I was a bit big, I got, invi- I got asked to do uh, maitre d' and door work at clubs. Right. Because uh, I looked a bit more the part. So, <coughs> and because yeah. Richard was gay and we had a lot of gay mates, the, the, being gay friendly back in the 80s was quite a big deal for door work. It was, yeah. yeah. Were, so I got, I got hired a lot by gay events because I d- it didn't bother me. No, I didn't that's care. right. Mm. Um, so uh, I, then, I, then that moved into um, the fetish scene. <laughs> so I, I started doing um, the door at some of that. Yes. And, and so we had those clothes. It's amazing. It, it yeah. wasn't a big deal for but us when we talking to, when we did I'm Too Sexy and we talked to the director because yeah. we had no money. And uh, he said, what are you going to wear? I said, we just bring our own clothes. And that was it. And so, t- so we had leather trousers and all that stuff. I'll tell you who used to wear all the fetish stuff was <laughs> in the very early days was Take That. Yeah, they did. Yeah. We met them on uh, that morning show that, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was. Some, yeah. did some dodgy, yeah. funny old morning show. And the, yeah, they had all the leather stuff and the, and yeah. the, and the studied necklace. Yeah. And, you know, that's, thing. that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about the song itself? Where, tell it, where did that come well, that from? Because that obviously is what people know yeah. you for. If you say that, they're immediately going to say right. Yes. Yeah. What happened was we were working in a studio, a basement studio, well, the guy's house actually, um, and we were working on another track called Heaven. And the bass line was da 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 da, da which we just put on the synth. And it was really, really hot in this basement. And, I, and the guy's bedroom was kind of just a, a small distance away from where we were working. So I went into, the, into the, his bedroom and he had one of those old fashioned wardrobes with a mirror in the door. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, just, I could still hear the da 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 da. <laughs> and um, so I just took my shirt off and started singing, I'm too sexy for you. <laughs> And that was it. I mean, and the rest is history. I was going to say, but I mean, look what you did. I mean, the first mm. British band to have a number yeah. one in the US since the Beatles. Mm. The Beatles? Who, so yeah, who, who are they? Yeah. Do we, do we know I, I who don't know. Any, well, I don't know. Anything. They were highly yeah. overrated. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, a fantastic hit. Did, were you surprised? Yes. Oh, completely. Yeah, we, I mean, all we wanted was to get it on the radio. Yeah, because really? we'd, yeah, we'd, yeah, we'd just come back from New York. We had a deal with EMI, Capital EMI in... New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were signed as the next Billy Idol because we used to do this big eights and drums yeah. and things. And um, we picked up some, uh, uh, some really good management and, and we got a, a lot of money up front. Back in the day, they used to do development money. We got 60 grand. Well, oh, those were the days. <laughs> yeah, so in 1987, <laughs> yeah. $60,000 was a lot of money. money. So we, we think this is great. So, so we're waiting for the money. And it doesn't come, so we go, okay. We're so, always waiting for the money. So, so, so then we get a personal check from our lawyer, of our lawyer, our manager, right. for $2,000. Because he so I'm has... going, where's the 58, the rest of the... Please rest, don't tell me he had yes. the 58,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he creamed yeah, it off the top. Yeah, trousered it, yeah. Cr- trousered it. Yeah, oh so, yeah. 
gosh. So we walked away from the deal. <laughs> the beauties of the music business. Yeah, we, I know, walked, yes. we walked away <laughs> we from that. We could talk about that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. So, so, yeah. yeah, so we came back sort of with our tails between our legs. Yeah. We were pretty unhappy. Mm. So that's why we set up right. So Feb, which was just an acoustic thing, we thought, let's just really simplify this, go and do some shows. And what we used to do in um, Friday and Saturday night in Soho, we wouldn't, uh, we would just walk into restaurants and start playing. Hold restaurants. on, guys, we've got to take a quick break. Okay. Okay. Come back and join me All then right. in just a minute. Hello and welcome back to the show. I'm here with the wonderful Right Said Fred, of course, Richard and Fred Fairbrass. Just before the break, we were talking about, you were, well, you were strumming there, Fred. Yes. You we were, were strumming. Yes. We were so, busking. Yes, you were busking. So continue with that story. Right, so we came out of New York, sort of tail between our legs. Then we thought, because we still wanted to play, so we mm. thought, what were we going to do? So we didn't, uh, we thought, let's keep it really simple. So just the two of us. And we were busking in the plaza in uh, Covent Garden. Yep. Uh, with a, a Time Out Festival. And then we said, um, we thought, well, what, instead of getting gigs, why don't we just gate crash? You don't get asked. I love it. Just walk into a <laughs> restaurant. Just walk in. So we would li we'd, walk, we'd be walking around, so we'd go, oh, well, we'd, so we'd yeah. see the restaurant. And we'd literally just walk in and start playing. Most of the time, they'd just say, what are you doing? Get out. Yes. Can you please yeah. get out? Yeah. But on a couple of occasions, there was a bar called Fred's Bar that was a private member's. Right. And we start. We got a residency there. Yep. And Wonderful. And then Braganza, we got a residency there. Just from purely walking yeah. in? Yeah. Great. So and, and we refused to play cover versions. Yeah. So we were just that was half the trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, was, was it really? Yeah, well, in as much as they want to hear, they want to hear songs they know. Yeah, they yeah. want to hear songs they know. They it's don't true. want to hear us battling on about our stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's true, you know. isn't it? So we did that for a while. Then, um, then we got bored, and we. Um, I, I was still working as a. Um, I, I worked as a guitar tech and roadie for yeah. on and off for years and years with a company called Ritz and in uh, Peter Weber's Ritz. And I said to them, do you happen to know any guitar players that are like, you know, kind of looking for a gig? And so they said, there's this guy called Rob Manzoli. Right. Um, so we contacted Rob. He was local to us. Uh, and we got together and said, look, let's write a song. We don't want to hear any of your ideas and you won't hear of any of ours. Let's write a brand new song that none of us have ever written before. Let's just have a clean shape. Uh, slate. slate. Yes. So we, we had this song called Heaven, as which is described, yeah. and then yeah. that, that turned into I'm Too Sexy. Yes, that's basically wow, what it was. That's yeah. Isn't that yeah. incredible? But we yeah. didn't have any ambitions for it to be a hit. No. no. And we didn't have any, and certainly abroad. I mean, that never crossed oh, our minds I mean, at it's all. It's just, it went huge. Yeah. Abroad, yeah. I remember it? flying the very first time we flew to Belgium. I to was going to say, what was the country that we, it became most successful? It, it was very successful America in France, was, I have uh, to say. Uh, America was the most successful. Really? It was number one in America. Yeah. But uh, the first. In Europe? Uh, Europe was. Um, Europe was good. I mean, <coughs> all, all Sweden, yes. uh, Holland, yeah. Belgium. Yes. Uh, but Germany, Austria, Switzerland didn't get into it. Uh, it was Don't Talk, Just Kiss that broke us there. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And then Sexy charted on the back yeah. of that. Well, when we flew to Belgium, I remember thinking, that's when it dawned on me you could have a hit abroad. Yes. Cross ne never crossed my mind really? before. No. So really, you kind of unexpectedly fell into this yeah, yeah. Sort of position. And, we, and also yeah. we fell into yeah. the whole yeah. the whole celebrity thing, yes. which we weren't ready for at all. Yes. No, and we didn't want it. And we didn't really want it, yeah, I don't we think. Suddenly I was found going ourselves. to say, did you, did you, were you, everybody must have wanted you to, be, to, do, to get the American number one. That yes. was huge. It, yeah, I mean, we found ourselves being, well, we were doing TV shows. We did, um, we did Arsenio Hall, which yeah. was their biggest nighttime show at the wow. time. Yes. And the guy said, once you've done this show, you won't be able to go out on the street. So we thought, nah, he's talking bollocks. So we <laughs> jumped on a plane after that and went up to New York on that red eye flight. Yes. And when we went out in New York the next day, he was right. It, really? was, it was very oh, difficult. Oh, that was a huge show. Yeah, yeah. Huge massive. Show. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, but then what happened was, because we did that show, we started getting booked for other shows, but they didn't know what we did. They just knew we were famous from that show. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we would be going so to. We, just turn up, we, yeah. we, did, we did Good Morning America with yes. um, Regis and Kathy Lee. Right. right, those two, yeah. Yes. So we're sitting there, and the, the booker comes up, and he says, oh, "You'll be on in five minutes." He, what, what do you do? No. Yeah, he said, "What do you do?" I said, "We're we, we're mm, banned." We're oh, banned. Oh, oh, what, what song's that? So I said, "I'm too sexy." He goes, "Oh, oh, that." Oh, That's okay. it. Yeah. They didn't know what we did. In fact, we, it, if we'd yeah. said, "Oh, we're jugglers," or we're yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make it up. In, and in America, we got uh, chastised by the label for not acting famous enough. Yeah, we did, yeah. I was going to yeah. ask you, because to be honest with you, I mean, I've known you for, a, I've listened to your music, yeah. you know, for a number mm. of years, and I've always loved your music, And but you've never really liked the fame. I mean, is that fair to say? I, I, I like it when it makes sense. So, yes. so if you've had a hit mm. record, I get that. Yes. If you're, on, if you're doing some big shows, I, under, I understand that dynamic. But if you're sitting in a restaurant, 
having a bite to eat. Yes. Which happened to us yesterday. This lady came yeah. up oh. and told her daughter yeah. who we are and whatever. Right in the middle of my pasta. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that, for me, that makes yes. no sense. Yeah, and I didn't mean that in any disrespect way. I just think it's because you just <clears> seem <throat> such an, a, a, an, I hate to say it's but like a normal pair of guys who just are so into their music. First and foremost, yeah, and that's, we, that's the thing that you love. Yeah, we did try the red carpet thing for a while. Yes. Yeah, we did that. Um, and we were rubbish at it. Yeah, we used to get drunk. We used to, we had to get drunk to do it. A lot. We got <laughs> And uh, we, went to, we went to one thing. I think Lady Di was, was, uh, was there, actually. Or Clint Eastwood, wasn't it? Or Clint yeah. Eastwood, I can't remember, yeah. yeah. And um, what they do as you're walking down the red carpet, they film you. And then when you're in the theatre, they, they, they show the film of right. the people arriving. Okay. And I had bought this suit from Harrods, which I thought was extremely smart. Yes. I don't know. It, and I, when I saw it, I was sitting there watching the big screen, and I looked like a double glazing salesman. No. It was absolutely crap. Just was you. Suit. It was a you up. Oh, it was a rubbish suit. Mm. So, um, <laughs> so we tried it, and well, another time we had to go and get drunk because yeah. we didn't. And it, it, in the end, it just we just knew we weren't going to be any good at it. Mm. Standing in front of the boards and doing the pose and yes. the cameras. It's, some people are some people are great at it. Yes. Work it. And I, the minute they say, can you stand in this media board and that media board? And I feel awkward. Yeah. I, like, I just want to go home. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I do. Take and, me uh, home. And what happened was, you know, it was partly our own fault because in the video we took our shirts off. Yes, of course. And the video director, James, you know, said... We all wanted to see you without your shirts well, off. Well, that's what he said. That's and we it, didn't yes. think about that. He, no. said, you said, you, he said, you've got to rip your shirts off. We said, why? He said, the song says I'm too sexy for my, my shirt. shirt. I went, oh, all right. Yeah. So it was James's yeah. idea, and, it was. Um, and, and you know, he he just basically mapped the song out with yeah. um, models and cars and hats yes. and everything. And we had we'd never never done a video really, so we not that sort of video. So we um we just went along with it. We didn't really think taking our shirts off would be this thing. No. And then suddenly we we were sent a video. It was a bar in America somewhere, where the girls behind the bar wouldn't stop playing our video. It was like a video. Um, jukebox. Yes. So you could you could just on the and put it, repeat. and they put it on loop, and the yeah. guys got so offended, a fight broke out. <laughs> and someone has said to this, of these girls and these blokes and getting one, stuck into each other. And one one guy in a strip bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he died. Oh no. Now what happened was uh, Candy or whatever her name was. Yes. was his, uh, she had these crazy big boobs. Yeah, yes. Was his favourite dancer. Yes. Uh, and he he ordered I'm Too Sexy as a song and ordered and asked for her. And he buried his face in, you know, yes. uh, yeah. and and died, suffocated. And on the coroner's thing, it said <laughs> died from oral excitement. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. How do you know that guy? <laughs> because <laughs> he, he, he was sent to us. The guy said, I yeah. think his last name was Green. It's Daniel Green. Daniel Green. Yeah. yeah. And, and yes. it, was, it was sent to us. This poor guy. And yeah. honest, it's so we actually sometimes introduce some of this song can kill people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Monty Python fatal joke. It you know, is, it that? is. Yeah, yeah. But you've, you, I mean, from there, though, you've been incredible. Your career ha really has sustained. I mean, how long? You, well, 1989. Yeah, the math. Do the math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It, yeah. you know, you've been around. What's the one thing for you, which I'll ask you first, mm. that, you, that you've seen a change in the mu music industry, that something that you think, mm, um, I think not so for, good? No, I think for me, it's the disconnection between pop artists and the people that buy the records. There's a, stra a strata, if you like, of pop artists mm -hmm. who are, you know, the MTV people and the, and the you know, the Beyonce and the whole thing. And there doesn't seem to, to me to be a, a rootsy kind of connection to this. So well, that's what I was watching uh, Peter Green the other day doing Oh Well. And that's what I like. That, I'm just watching that. And it's a, just, it's a, it's a really solid band playing to punters mm. and I'm that's the that's the aspect that I miss now you don't see some en enough of that and also of course a lot of pubs uh, that were gigs are now all closed that's, that's the thing isn't it so and in London especially so oh, many places London is uh, really uh, yeah. have closed down it really yeah. is heartbreaking mm. how about for you Fred what uh, would it's, you the, say? it's the corporatization mm. of it the inter interconnectivity between the financial sector mm. the media entertainment uh, the sponsors. It, when we started, you could, generally speaking, you had there's a you could not say what you wanted to, but there was a degree of there's some wiggle room, and um, now that's gone because if you upset one person, that has ramifications, as we've discovered in the last three years, <laughs> and um, so that that uh, autonomy has gone, yeah, which I think is a great shame. There's a lot of very um, compliant artists out there who aren't, who we know 
aren't happy in their compliance. It's a shame, really, because you, you know. lose that musical. You know, the, you're in the music business because of music. Yes, I do. So well, pop music you know, is, is folk music. Yes. Pop music is folk music. It's about folk. It's about people. As Fred says, the more corporate it becomes and the more exclusive it becomes, because you need big money to make these fancy records and fancy videos, um, the more distance you get. That's, and that, that, in a way, is what the punk movement was. It was about bringing the whole thing back down. Yes. Mm. Um, and, you can was, yeah. and you can argue about whether that was a good thing musically or not. But I understand, I didn't, I didn't understand it at the time, but I understand mm. the thinking behind it now, yes. which was it, because the, the big enemy at the time was Peter Frampton, because he was, you know, he was the big star kind of thing. And uh, it was all to do with bringing it back down to clubs and, you know, safety mm. pins and rubbishy clothes and all yeah. that. Yes. It was quite refreshing. And now it's, it's kind of, that's why we work independently, so we can pretty much please ourselves. I mm. couldn't, neither of us would work well with a company chewing our ear off about no, A, B or we, C. We did a project w with a major label uh, in Germany about uh, two years ago mm -hmm. and we yeah. got flown out there uh, to hang about with the record label and to go on this big TV show and stuff yeah. and we're sitting in a room sort of like this mm. uh, and the, in a green room and we're waiting to go on this TV show and there's these guys from the record label and we're literally there for about six or eight hours with these people who were very nice it was my birthday actually and they bought it me was, a nice yeah. bottle of gin and everything <laughs> yeah. and, um, but no one talked about music so no. we're, we're in a music show backstage with musicians and record companies and music was not discussed. If we'd said pie charts, he would have leapt, yeah, to, leapt to his metadata. <laughs> he would have leapt to his feet. We've got to leave it there, guys, just for a minute. But come back and join me again after the break. Welcome back to the show, and I'm here with the wonderful Right Said Fred. We've got so much to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so just before the break, obviously we were talking about record labels, yes. yep. independency. Yes. So you guys are very independent, aren't yes. you? You like to do your own thing. We do. Yes. Yes. So reasons behind that, Fred? Reasons behind that came, it, it was born out of, uh, I'm just actually broke, was a hit without a record deal. We had a, a letter of intent, but there was no, there, right. there was no record deal. So we have been, We've liked the independent route um, since then. Uh, we've been signed to major labels. It didn't go very well for us. We're not anti-major no. labels no. at all because we sometimes license our tracks through them. And they've done yes. some of them, like BMG in Germany, did a fantastic job. Um, but we like the autonomy. We like the fact that we can release a record if we want to if we, and, and not if we don't want to. We can pick and choose which shows we go on, who we speak to, who we don't speak to. It, it definitely has its, um, the downside is uh, the financial side. Of course, Because yes. you're not part of the machine. You're not included in that BPI. Into that, yeah, in, BPI in, media kind in, of in, hype. In that cartel, yes. 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 Uh, which can be really beneficial to be part of that. Um, but we aren't part of that. And so you have to accept the rough with the smooth. It Something has. that's done you very well. <coughs> yeah. it, Overall. It, it clearly suits you. Yes. And I think it maybe if you tried to do go the other route, you know, with the majors, I, you wouldn't have been perhaps no, as happy. No, I, th no. I think... I mean, Might have richer. For, yeah, <laughs> we'd be part, richer. I think, we'd be richer, yeah. Yes. yeah. I think one of the things, as Fred said, we're not against it. We've just never met anybody. Yeah. That, that, that thinks our wavelength. Mm. That's whether it's a manager or a or a record company. Yeah. It's just you know when I, if we met somebody and you they, would consider they, it maybe. absolutely yes. yeah. The trouble is everybody is chasing. With the, when we're talking about the German thing with this mm. uh, the record that we did, and they, they they came to us with it and they said yeah all we're looking for is a summer hit. Not interested. No, we're not interested. We're not interested. Is that's all you're looking for? Mm. They then go. I'm sorry, then you're not the people to speak to. See, and other to. musicians might, as you say, jump on that and Some go, oh, might. yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah. it's not you. No. And I think it's no. very important that you stay true to yourself and your music. As best you it? can. Yes. As best you can. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it's really difficult because we've done corporate shows course, for yes. some corporates that maybe aren't the, aren't the, aren't the uh, squeaky clean people that we'd like them to be. And every, every band does, you know. Um, and so we, we kind of do it now because we, we, we're, we're in our little niche and we yes. get on and do what we do. I mean, we'd like um, a UK agent. Um, we, we kind of got cancelled because of you know, the whole COVID yes. thing. Uh, a UK agent would be handy. But other than that, we're fairly, we're fairly OK. We've got a very good distribution deal with an independent distributor called um, Plastic Head. Yeah. And they've done a great global deal. It's licensing through different companies. They've done Excellent. a very good deal. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. So countries that normally aren't interested in us, like France or Spain, <laughs> yeah, France. we've we've actually it's been selling records in those in those territories yeah. with the new album, the new album, the with singles the new album. album. Yes. That's been moved. That, that we've actually had reorders. It's physical. It, it's actually 
Now let, let's yeah. talk about that, this new album. Yes. It's called yeah. the Singles Album. <coughs> yep. So um, we're actually going to be um, playing your video okay. um, right. at the end of the show. Right. Um, I've watched it. It's very different, and I like it. Is. it. Yes, yeah. it is, but yeah. it's very different. Yes. Um, um, Spiritual, Spiritual War, Spiritual forgive me, it's called. Yeah. Which is a bit and worrying, again, now tell me a little bit about that. How did well, that, this well, come Well, we, uh, the, the whole spiritual side of it came, I suppose, because we know a um, Franciscan monk. Uh, who's now in Honduras doing good works and stuff. And uh, he is absolutely convinced that the period we're living through is a period of light and dark. There's no question in his mind that's what it is. And we bumped into him once in Gibraltar, and he was whizzing along. He had his cape on and the whole thing. He wears the habit. The, with the, the, the habit, oh, the wooden, right. wooden cross. The wooden yeah. cross yeah. and the sand. Does the whole thing. And he's tall, big, big guy, Jesuit priest. And uh, he said, oh, where are you going? He said, well, I'm off to uh, have a drink to celebrate the Virgin Mary's birthday. And what was cool about that is that he didn't say... Maybe some people think, or I believe. As far as he was concerned, that, that was, was her it. birth. That was it, and I like that certainty. I like that commitment. And um, and then uh, we we got to know Bob Moran through through, through several things that we've been doing, and we put this thing put this thing yeah. together. And yeah. uh, but I think it is, uh, it's hard for people who come from a normal background to imagine how how ill ill meaning some of these people are. You know, people where you're talking about Soros or, or whoever it is, you know, they're, they're not happy or good people. Um, and I think we need to absorb that fact if we want to move on. Yeah, well that, yeah. We've, we've, the, the album's re re records. Yes. So we've yeah. re recorded all our biggest hits. Yes. Um, plus a whole bunch of new tracks that um, people may have missed or whatever. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. come out brilliant. Yes, yeah. so we put yeah. that on certain tied. This one called Tide was our most recent number one, which is uh, recent on the in independent charts. Yes. With my um, and uh, and, th and then, as you say, the a brand new song is Spiritual War. So we put, we were actually asked to put it together. We hadn't thought of doing it. This just a uh, plastic head came to us and said, we think there's a market for this. Mm. So we thought, all right, let's give it a shot. So, I think so it's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, and it, it, it's doing all right. I mean, we always knew we'd struggle with getting uh, with getting through the. That the, the gatekeepers. Yeah, the gatekeepers. <laughs> but we've got round some of them. Yes. Uh, and it's been picked up in areas we didn't think it would be. Yes. Um, and it's, um, yeah, we're, we're quite happy with it. And yeah. it's been played. That You know, that's the <coughs> thing, it is isn't it? Played. It, it is It is difficult, yeah. as you say, to get through the gatekeeper. It is, yeah. To get it onto the mainstream yes. yeah. radio stations. It, it's indelibly printed in people's minds mm. what you first appeared with. Yes. Yes, it is. That, yes, you know, yes. it's like the Stones and Satisfaction or yes, whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just so they still think of you as I'm too sexy. They do. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. What, uh, what was good about Spiritual War for us mentally was it took us away from that fluffy party time thing and it had a certain, it has a certain meaning that's important yeah. other than just writing a song because yes. you like it or you hope people like it. You know, it has a... It has a uh, connected a, to a, it. A, it yeah, we, we were connected yeah. to it. And, yeah. and as a consequence of COVID and the whole speaking out thing, we've become... We've become something more than just what we were. There's another angle to You've us. Matured, I think. if you like. I think we yeah. matured. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think. I think we have. Yeah. A bit. I, I mean, the next trap we're going to do is. Is st I still want to do a really thumping four on the floor. Happy, happy, happy yeah, track. I think we've done our <laughs> uh, French face. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, we've got. Yeah. We've written a song yeah. that we're very happy with. Yeah. So, uh, so that's. So I'm also with with us because we did this speaking out thing during COVID. Yes. You know, we we know what the, the mainstream media. Did to us, and um, we got. Uh, we still, yeah, you know, we still go to interviews, and they say, "So you're anti-vaxxers, aren't you?" Go, no, <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. Yes. And all they've done is pick up, is go online. It's on Google. It must yeah. be true. Yes. And we've never said that. We've never said we're anti-vaxxers. We never denied COVID deniers. COVID deniers. You know. you know, I thought masks were a joke, and I still do. I'm not going to back down from that but you know what you want to jab something in your body knock yourself out just don't tell me to do it yeah and that's that's our position and so we um, the the mainstream media and the likes you know the usual suspects like julie hartler brewer and piers morgan and who's that other idiot james <laughs> james whale these sort of these sort of pond life journalists kind of just lied they just lied because it suited the narrative yeah and haven't got the manners to say actually we got that wrong well the investigative journalism is actually quite yeah. hard to find now i was watching a thing the other day about john pilger and it reminds you of what investigative journalism journalism should be where people really want to pull up the carpet and start looking at what's yeah. going yes. on yeah um what we've been suffering not suffering from whatever you want to call it mm. in the last three years is journalism by virtue of government dictat that's basically what it is just because we're just frightened I, well, I think I think scared. Th yeah, I think they're putting their head above the ball. Yes, they well, when you see well, a lot of obviously, if, if you're a player and you, the only time you get paid is when you play, mm. 
then you have every reason for not speaking out because yeah. you know your shows are going to get cancelled. And you, if you've got a, a wife and kids or you want to put food on the table... Family and a mortgage. Yeah. Yes. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't blame these people. Yeah. I, I don't blame them. I, our position was always, it's got to be your choice. Yeah. It's, yeah. Got to, it's, uh, that, yeah. it's a bit like going back to the old abortion co uh, conversation, you know, my body, my choice. Yes. Um, and if that applied then, then it implies now. People have a choice. Absolutely. Uh, and, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for you guys, the, the music industry has changed. You know, completely, a completely, yeah. yes, or a lot, either yeah. way, but yeah. it has changed. It has. Do you think it's more difficult now for young musicians, or do you think it's easier for them now? I don't think it's either. No. I think it's harder to make money, um, but on, on the other hand, because of the internet, because of technology, it's easier to make it, it's easier to distribute it. And get heard. And get heard. I think it's easier to find your tribe, if you like, your little niche. <laughs> yes. And there's lots of bands out there who you may never hear on the radio have a really, really great following. They have a strong All following on social media. Absolutely. That's the thing, exactly. Which can, yes. if handled properly, create revenue. So I think it swings around about Back in the day with us, if you didn't get on the, the uh, radio shows we got on, like Simon Bates and... Yes, Gary I mean, Crowley, that was, that, you had to get on those. Yeah, if you did, you, yeah. you were in for a bit of a rough time. Mm. Yeah. Now there are some options that, that can work. And, and records have, as we know, have broken through... You know, video games, mm -hmm. uh, you know, YouTube. Yes. YouTube has become, you know, a, yeah, quite a yeah. big yes, thing, isn't yes. it? It's much for young up and coming stars. They tend to put it on YouTube and then, exactly. you know, three months or a year down yeah. the line, oh, I was discovered on YouTube. Yeah. Yes. I mean, know, a lot of it depends also on the kind of, on the genre. That yes, of course. You know, yeah. if, you're, if you're a live yeah. rock band, Yes. That becomes a lot more expensive yes. and a lot more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a dance, an EDM sort of dance act, and you can do it all on a computer at home yeah. and fly it out to Spotify, then that's a different thing yeah. altogether. And yeah. then you've got the gigs. You know, um, you uh, well, still perform, yeah. but yeah. it's a costly thing, isn't it? To, oh, to it's, it's, it's yeah, much more than you people. You see people think. saying, "Oh, yeah, but go and make your, your money from touring." Well, whoever says that has never budgeted. <laughs> yeah, <in> the <laughs> so no, never budgeted. Well, I speak to many musicians. That I think the only yes. money you get is from the merchandise. From yes, merchandise. yeah, and also not all genres drive merchandise. Yes, that's right. You know, yeah. so obviously you'll get a band like Iron Maiden and Kiss, and the yes. merchandise is extraordinary. Yeah. But you'll look at some other bands, and particularly if you're in the pop genre, merchandise isn't always that great. It depends on the artist. Yes. Yeah. And the Rolling Stones are famous for their merchandise, and yes. they, you know, obviously. But then those bands are at, are, um, are, are at an extraordinary level. Exactly. So if you work your way down a few a few rungs and you get to regular bands, the idea that you're suddenly going to do you know, a couple of hundred grand yeah. uh, a week on merch is is a joke. Mm. It is. You know, yeah. it will be hundreds. Well, a band well, like Kiss is all merch. Oh, I yeah. know, yeah. exactly. It's all merch. Well, yeah. We're going to take another break. Yeah. Come back and join us again in just a minute. Hello and welcome back to the show. So guys, oh, we've got so much to talk I about. Know, We're still we? talking, it's lovely. <laughs> We're talking about independent. Yep. Obviously, you're independent, you're happy to do that. Yep. But you're on tour, you're going to do some touring. And what are you doing? Yep, Tell us about that. Well, uh, we had a lot of shows cancelled. Yes. So we've been a little bit quiet on the show front. Why did they get cancelled? Can I ask? <laughs> because you? we spoke out. Right. So promote, okay. we were told we were too, uh, what was the word? Just um, controversial. Just controversial. Mm. We've got an uh, award at home for being the most controversial <laughs> band in, in the UK. No, we, we, we actually have got we an award. Have. <laughs> we got the awards by the Daily, Daily Mirror. Can you believe it? Oh, can you say? The most know. controversial yeah. band. <laughs> and, um, anyway. Just yeah, because so you've spoken out. Yeah. It's just made so very we, odd. We, yeah, so we go out, we're going out in September. Yeah. We've got a, a small run of shows. Uh, yeah. Gibraltar, one in the UK maybe. Germany, Austria, somewhere else, I can't remember. So a little bit of a run. Yes. Uh, and then I think, looking at it, we'll be out again in the spring. Maybe some shows over Christmas. Do you miss it when you don't Yes. Fall? I yeah, don't miss yeah. the travelling. No. No, no. no, the travelling, no. I could, you know, the airport. It's awful, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. How you get a little bit? Yeah, as you, yeah, yes. yeah. airports you get, Where's become, the limousine? Yeah, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we did it awesome. once where the, the limo goes onto the... Um, Tarmac. Tarmac. How lovely. And you do that little staircase. Yes. Nice. yes. That's that, very that was nice. Because obviously we're in festival season. Any yes. festivals that we not, can see not you at? Until, nothing until September. Okay. Yeah, yeah we kind of got erased this yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens next yes, year. Yes, exactly. And, and then, um, and also depends where you are in the world. We've been, we've been asked if we want to do a run in Australia. We might go and do that. But again, do we want to do the flying? It's all those conversations. Yes, it is. Because you have to, yeah. you know, you can't just, well, I suppose you, some people would just fly straight to Australia. Yes. But that's a yeah. long, it that's is a long, long haul. Flight, haul. Yeah. Also, when, haul. when you start off, yes. uh, which we hadn't realised, every hotel room is nicer than where you live. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> when you start off. 
but then once and you've made while, it, yes. after a while, every hotel room is much worse yes, than where is. you live. And, and you get sick of the hotel room. And you get, oh, just, yeah. I remember, I know, it's I remember terrible, Mick isn't it? Jagger saying, if anybody mentions earth colours to me yeah. again, I'll yeah. kill myself. <laughs> they do, I mean, it sounds I like this, people first world problem. You do get into that little bubble. Yes. Yeah. And I do understand why bands stay on the road, because you, you are separate from the world. Mm. You are, you, you're, you're living in this sort of parallel universe. But they go on their bus, remember those days? You used well, to be we, in the little, we used the to bus. Love that. The bus, it, yeah, I actually I mean, liked I've, it. I've, I've, I've interviewed um, musicians and they've talked about, you know, the best the best times yes. when they were on their minibus. Oh, absolutely. And they were just, you know, sleeping in the minibus, yeah. rocking up and doing a gig. Absolutely. You know, having some yeah. kebab on the way home yeah. and then yes. going in. The, that was, you know, yeah. good memories yeah. for them. I, when we first had a tour in Germany and they were saying, talking about the bus, I've never yeah. used the bus before. And I remember thinking, are you telling me that I'm expected to sleep on a bus? <laughs> Why can't we just go from four-star hotel yes, to five-star hotel? Yes. And then I did the bus, and I thought, oh, oh no, I like this. This, this is exactly. good, yeah. yeah. So the is there anything you, you'd like to do that you haven't done? Uh, uh, Albert Hall. Albert Hall? Yeah, Albert Hall. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah. Beautiful and venue. And Beautiful like, acoustics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to do a track with a DJ. Oh. Someone like Robin Schultz, yeah. like Calvin Harris. Yes. Um, someone like that who's got a real pop sensibility. I'd like to do a track. I mean, we're not very sort of typical of that genre of really that sort of dancing but um yeah i would yeah but I, there's no there's no reason why that couldn't happen no, because no, you're no. i mean you're i'm too sexy go back going back yes, to that single was the yeah. most successful yes. single i yes. just said the arbor hall are they all sitting down at the arbor hall yes but oh. yeah, you can stand up can you yes you can yeah, yes. i don't like sitting they're doing down all venues. sorts of things there now like ministry of sound are doing a gig there oh, they? Uh, okay. that oh, i'm going to go and see which is amazing where you have the full orchestra but they have dance music so oh, it's a mix uh, between right. the two yes, yes, yes. Uh, incredible. Okay. sometime in september right. it's incredible so i think that's and do you think about the young musicians that are coming up again mm. things like that are going to be more popular than ever because this is the first thing like that that i'm actually going to i love yes. that sort of thing where you have you've got the full orchestra and then so you've got yes. sort of like the arts yes and dance yeah. well i think you can never yeah. people love being together yes and, 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 and the herd yeah. thing you know so it's a really that's what you know some of the people in the upper elite thing they don't get this mm. um and so i think the, 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 the that communal thing is really important and the orchestra thing is something that you rarely see mm. you know when we, we saw frank sinatra back in the day at the abba hall oh, wow. and um 40 piece orchestra yes. oh wonderful i mean wonderful. absolutely yes. fantastic yes. you know, it's becoming more popular though isn't it, it? Is, well, yes. musicians are rod stewart had a full piece um, yes. orchestra yep. so and it's becoming more popular and white a shade of pale the guys who, uh, who yes. um, they, they did yes. with, the, with the live orchestra i could see that with yeah. you that yeah. would yeah. be, yeah. That, That'd be great. That would be great particularly with um stuff like deeply dippy and don't talk just yes oh it's all have it all orchestration about them. Yeah, you never yeah. know who's watching. You <laughs> never, <laughs> the book heard of it here first. Exactly. We're going to play your spiritual war. Okay, so, you. Um, you know, before before we play that lovely video, mm. again, it, it, it means a lot to you. I can I can see it that. Does. Do you yeah. think that you're going to continue along that sort of theme? I think it'll be a mix of things. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some sort of very poptastic ideas mm. at the moment that we're we're writing mm. that uh, are very more to do more like the first album probably. But so I think at the moment we'll draw a line after our, our, under our sort of reflective period, yes. and we'll probably both go a bit more poptastic in the, on the next stuff. But one of the most, I think, one of the influences for us was a guy called Five Times August. Oh. Uh, he's an American singer, right. singer, singer, singer right. song. Okay, okay. Really Five good. Times. Yeah, really yeah. Brad Skistimus is his name. Wow, what's his name? Five, five, five. He goes under the name of Five Times August, okay. and he does all his songs. Well, the ones that introduced us to him mm. were protest songs about what's been going on, right. and that's when that kindle a, a, an interest in me well both of us i think did that to, kind of spark an interest yeah just yeah, to, yeah. to comment he's you know? a very he's a very good lyricist he's a great yeah, lyricist yeah. yes and that kind of brought you to where you are now as far as the last yes, couple of years and high yeah. res yeah. high res is There's another a few guy artists that we've really connected with yeah. in the last three two two or three years yeah. that, uh, that have that resonated people like jimmy levy high, high res, res the rapper five times august yep um, Tom McDonald. Yeah, they've been doing some really good stuff. Yeah, it's interesting because the music is musicians are changing. You know the kind of genre, if you like. But we like to put musicians in a genre, don't yeah, we? Yeah, in a box. They do, but it do. is in a box, isn't it? We're, now they're kind of coming out of the box and yes. just sort of. Well, I'm just going to be whatever I want to be. Yes, really. Which I, which I which, think you know, that's, yeah. you know, artists should be allowed to say. That's mm. the whole point of art. Yes. Guernica. That's exactly what Guernica was. Yes. It's, a, it's a comment. It's yes. a, it's, you know. Absolutely. And so uh, I think artists should be encouraged to say what they think rather than discouraged. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you very for, much for joining Thanks. me today. Would you like to introduce your new new single? Oh, oh I love the way both of you talk. Oh, I'll do it. Uh, go on then. Off you go. <laughs> okay. Off you go. Uh, this is our new single, uh, which is available now, and it's from our singles album. It's called Spiritual War. It's a spiritual war, 